Hello everyone and welcome back to Don 10. We've got Anel versus Dofi. Oh yeah. This is a lot of fun. I had to post this match first. I uh, got some Anel matchups in two different tournaments recorded, so I'm just going to smash them together and post them how I see fit. I'm going to post two from this tournament, two from the other tournament, because I think it both shows the weak, like the proper weaknesses and like power this deck has in all four of those games. So this is the first. We draw Kikunojo. I believe we went first and we were forced to go first. And I believe we took a mulligan. So, but we get Atsu, the Weevil out of play and just swing for five. It's a little 1K out of hand, that nice SP Boa. Now we are doing Makino over Flampe in this list because I like the idea of getting yourself to that um, Kingdom Come life total and the four cost event that buys back an L or puts an L into play from hand. I like being able to get yourself to that faster. And Makino is a really good card to do that alongside Flampe, but I'm choosing Makino one for budget reasons, two. I really like the idea of being able to restack my life in an L versus just drawing two cards essentially when I could draw a card and restack my life. You know, that seems a lot better in my opinion, especially in the early game. Like it's so much better. It's so much better. So here our opponent's on six Don and he didn't activate his leader much at all in this game, if I remember correctly. So I am probably going to try to slam down this Kikunojo as fast as possible. Just so that I have a 6k body in play. But there is a world that it could get pitched to something. I don't know. This is a weird matchup. Like, you don't really get her effect very much in this match unless they attack into it, which... I'm not going to lie to you guys, the opponent I'm playing against is a pretty smart player and he's no, he's going to know not to attack into that, he's just going to bottom deck it with like Red Rock or Gravity Blade. So I don't think I want to give him that opportunity, I mean it is just something for him to target instead of something else. So there is a world we could just bait it out. But here he throws us through the ringer and sends out a pudding. Oh man, this one had me thinking, I'm like, oh boy, my seven card is gonna be, or my seven card hand is now a five card hand. Now there is a world I could go back up to seven if he swings six at me, I just take it and draw. But the five card hand he gives us is not so bad. And he chooses to play out a law blocker and not attack, which I was like, oh man, now I'm really at five cards. <laughs> Well, now six with the draw, but I'm going to want to play something this turn. But he did give us a pretty good hand off that pudding. I'm not going to lie. He gave me a Kingdom Come, a Reject, a Yamato, I believe a Satori, and uh, an Enel. And we just picked up another Satori off of draw for turn. So we've got a pretty solid hand now. Not going to lie. That didn't feel so bad. So now we're just going to send five into life. More than likely, just gonna go five, six, seven. I think that's a good turn. He's gonna have to spend a lot of his resources trying to get rid of the Sinel, and this is a very good turn to drop it because he doesn't have much outside of leader to try to swing into it. So we know that more than likely, we're gonna have both these bodies stick around because I can easily protect the Anel unless he sends nine, 10, 11, like 11 at it specifically can't get rid of that so I'd have to use life but I don't think he's gonna invest that much Don onto it he's probably just gonna try to red rocket and I'll just easily throw the life away it's probably what I want to do but he could just like double swing here he could just swing the pudding and swing lead try to get lead ability going So he sends nine into the Anel. And I'm thinking to myself, 
I don't really want to burn both these 2k counters just to do that. So we pitched the top card of life, and I'm not that sad about it. Because I don't have a Machino to rearrange my life, and I would have had to, like, take from bottom and hope it wasn't something I wanted. Like, So I don't mind pitching the zero cost event, they're off the top of my life. We do have time to heal now. We're on 9 Don turn, so I can just Yamato. So what I plan on doing is just going 5 into the pudding. And if he if he tries to protect it with a, a 2k counter, I'm going to send the 7 into it and then play Yamato and blow up the pudding. Or blow up the Perona. So now I can just send 7 into life here. Which is nice. We get a life. And then we can pop the Perona. But, and I almost tried to heal there, but I, I told myself, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. I'm not at 1, so I can't heal. But now our opponent is on 10 Don turn, so he can do many of things this turn, but I'm pretty sure he's just going to go for a 10 Kaido, the one that draws him 4 cards, because it's not a terrible spot to do it. Like, if he was going to do a 10 drop at all this game, it's probably now. But he could just try to red rock the Yamato, which also is pretty good. And if he does take that route, he's probably going to then try to swing heavy into the Anel. But it looks like he's going the 10 drop route. And he plays down 10 Kaido. What a beautiful alt art. Picks up 4 cards because we're at 3 or less life for sure. And then he passes it on back over. And now we're on 10 Don turn again. So if we can top deck a heater here, that would be pretty cool. And it looks like we top decked another Yamato. Unfortunately, I can't KO anything, I can't heal with it, so it's not a good play this turn. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a pretty fair trade. I'm going to trade a life, even though it was a Sanji, for the Kaido. Easy trade there. Easy trade there. I really don't think there was a way I could have grabbed that life and then not lost it. So, like, you know, the, like I didn't have Makino. If I had Makino in hand right now, I could have avoided losing the Sanji and just had the Sanji in hand. But now I'm going to send 8 into life. If he counters out here to 9, we can just easily go 8 with lead and then 9 with Yamato. Probably get him to 1 here. Yep, yeah, that seems pretty fair. Nice, and we pass it on over. So we're feeling okay, we're feeling pretty good. There's no way he can kill us this turn because I'm pretty sure blue doesn't have anything in the rush category outside of... Usopp right now, and once OPO 8 hits, I believe, Blue gets another rusher in the form of uh, Speed Jill. But it's Whitebeard Pirate related, so doesn't go into Dofi. And he goes ahead and red rocks the Yamato and then plays out a Dofi blocker. And I've, I have a feeling he's just going to pass it on over. It's not much to do with one Don in blue, if I'm correct. He could just put out another Law Blocker for one Don. That could be pretty good, because then he still has a blocker if I end up finding, like, Reject or something. Or, I'm, uh, I meant, uh, Amaru. I always get the yellow cards mixed up. All the events, they all, they all do some crazy crap. They all gain life. They all KO stuff, right? <laughs> so we top deck a... Oh, we do have the... The Amaru in hand, so that's pretty sick. But we did pick up a Shirahoshi right now, and I actually kind of like that card. It's not amazing in this matchup, you can just bottom deck it. But it it's just more than likely going to just sit there and be a two-cost blocker. So it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be like, it's just a two-cost blocker that he's probably not going to want to waste a seven-cost event on. Like Gravity Blade, and then most assuredly he's not going to red rock it. So it's, it's not a bad play to get that down this turn. Because I still can't KO anything, but there is play to just playing the Yamato here. Yeah, this is fair. Send 6, send 7, drain some cards out of hand, and then play the Yamato. Yep. So now he's down to probably like 3 or 4 cards now. Maybe 5. Withdraw there. But we're sitting at 2 life, essentially 3. He still only has two attackers, so essentially we're able to stay, we've been able to stabilize pretty good throughout this entire game. And I do know at one point I slammed down this uh, Shirahoshi. And possibly the Satori, I can't remember. I, I, I do remember that we, we get some bodies down because he kept playing Red Rock 
on my Yamatos, which was just atrocious. I was just so sad. Like, back to back. Insane. I was starting to feel a little sketchier at this point, because, you know, as you can see, if you want to timestamp the video, but I was, I was feeling pretty sketchier, but he is going into the Anel character here for 8. This is an easy 2k out. I don't think I, like, there is a world I can trash the top card of my life here and be okay. Yeah, and we do. And it's, it's another Yamato. I wasn't going to get that to my hand, so at least in time for it to be that relevant. Because he's going to sit at 1-0 to zero for the rest of the game now. But if he, now, since we found the 4-cost event here, we can let Anel get attacked down if he wants to if he wants to go at it which is essentially he's going to be an attacker and a blocker here and then i can just bring him right back out of the trash now that i brought myself down to one so maybe that was my thought process was oh if i just go to one here and i ever get that four cost event i can just let anel die now and get him back for four instead of paying seven sounds great <laughs> and then eventually we can get into another yamto i think we've only well he put two to the bottom One's in the trash, so seeing the fourth one's probably unlikely here. But if we can just chain Anels at this point, I think we win the game. So here, I reject the Anel and rest the Dofi. And then I send 10 into the Boa Hancock. And then I'm pretty sure I just send a fat number into the Dofi blocker and then put out the Shirahoshi this turn. But it's, my OCD drives me crazy how I decided to use my Don here because like I should have just put the Frankie Don and the one that's below that one rested and then I wouldn't have them split up like this. But semantics, folks, semantics. That's just OCD semantics. So our turn actually turned out pretty okay because now, again, we're not in any danger of dying. And we do have a blocker in play now. He could just... And, like, what's gnarly is, like, our field is almost ungravity bladeable. Like, that card's just a dead card in his hand right now. Red Rock is okay, because then he's going to have to... He's going to essentially get me to use leader ability. But I, I'm like, you know, if you, let it, if you come at it, I'm just going to let it go. As long as it's not Red Rock. So our opponent's giving it a good thought. He plays out another Dofi, stacks the top of his cards, thinks he's going to send 9 into the Anel. If he goes 8 into Anel, I'm letting this go. Absolutely. Don't counter out of this. Don't block. Let it go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes we're smart. Then he plays out another Dofi blocker and just passes it on over because he knows what the top of his deck is. Though he still should have done it because he, he took a card off the top. So he would have gotten one more down. So maybe that's his bad. So then we play out the four cost event that allows us to buy back Anel from trash or hand. And put it into play. Which is really nice. And now we have six Don to work with. Now I can totally reject his life here. I'm like... I keep trying to get myself to get into a position where I can reject his last life and go for game, but he, I never get put into a position where I can do that. So I, I just go for board, see if I can, you know, get his blockers to be used. And he uses one here. And then I pay five and play out a Satori and just pass it on over. Because I'm trying to get it so that if he ever does get rid of this Anel again, and I, I can't find another 4-cost event to get it back, as long as it's, out, again, outside of Red Rock. Red Rock's the only card I care about right now where I will, like, aggressively use that ability and let him actually get my leader ability to go off, is if he ever comes at the Anel with a Red Rock. That's when I'll go, okay, I should probably... You know, use the Anel ability and then use leader ability. But, you know, is what it is. So you see him here contemplating using Gravity Blade on the Shirahoshi and the Satori. So, little note here. This was kind of a bait spell for me to make him do this. I was like, man, I just want to get all these bottom deck spells out of his hand. 
so that I can actually just start landing stuff, right? Because like the only thing I've been able to consistently stick is this Anel. He's a sticky guy. So I was hoping, you know, if I can get him to play Gravity Blade this turn, then that's another removal, so that'd be two Red Rocks and a Gravity Blade down. So the likeliness of him having another uh, Red Rock is lower, you know. But here, he just gets a bunch of stack. But he plays the Deval wrong here. He should have only looked at the top three. Um, so, no biggie. Like, no big deal. He already had looked at those top five from the X-Drake. Unless he put those to the bottom and then used the Deval to look at the top. Which then, that's a little weird, but it's fine. No big deal. He buys back a 2k with the Gecko. And he sends 7. I believe this is into an L. Oh, that's right. We just, we just have blockers since he didn't Gravity Blade. So if he would have, like, Gravity Bladed and then went 8 into the Anel, I would have been forced to protect it with its ability. So now we're back on Tendon. We're trying to figure out what the heck we're going to do now through all of these blockers. But I am trying to just deal with all of the attackers he's got. Because he's worried about dying, obviously. So And he's proven that by the way he's been playing his turns out. He's just been trying to load up on blockers. So I'm assuming he's not going to use them as attackers until he can go for game. And I can't get myself to get into a position where I can get this reject to take the last life and me go for it. So I just use it on the biggest blocker here. And now I have six Don to work with. I could use a Kingdom Come on something, but I, I just don't think that's necessary if we have it. I think I ideally we can attack down stuff. Either we're going to get rid of his blockers, or we're going to get rid of the Gecko that he just put back in play. So I'm going to send six into the Gecko here. See if he wants to save it. And that's the thing about my version of an L, is I'm not playing the Russian L. I'm playing the kind of fortressy type of an L where you're just trying to like stall and get into the late game and then beat his face in with an L over and over again. Because you can just buy it back, you can play out one fresh and then buy that back and do it again. And <laughs> it's just the, the four cost event is wild. So then we send eight, he cut or he counters out with nine, and then I play out a Shura. Get that top five action. And here, I'm pretty sure I take a Amaru because I know that if he doesn't play another blocker here, I can win the game now. So I have enough in hand to protect my board. So he has to like red rock and then split four Don up and try to go for it, which doesn't seem great. But or, or he could just like wait another turn too. That is, that is something he could do. But I think we're at a point here now where it's getting pretty dire. Like he's gonna, he's, got, he's, he's starting to get low on hand size and he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to start like really trying to get rid of my board so I can't kill him and he can stock up more blockers. But we've kind of plowed through a few blockers here. We got rid of an X-Drake, we got rid of a Deval, we got rid of two Dofies. If we deal with this Dofie, that's three Dofies down. I mean, he probably has available some number of... Uh, some number of uh, X-Drake blockers left and Deval blockers left, but... Oh, and he did show me Law too, so we did see a Law. So we've gone through quite a few blockers here. So he's trying to think now, now that he did the red rock on the Anel, I use the Anel ability to trash my life, and then leader ability triggers, so I have to trash card from him, which I trash the Shirahoshi to heal one. So now I'm sitting on Amaru and a 2k Satori. So if he splits it up and goes 6-7 to try to go for game, then I just 2k out, take the last life, and we get it. But then he has to, so he's got a few lines here, but I think the line he takes is he just goes, um, I believe he tries to swing into either Anel or um, Shura after going six into life.
But I'm pretty sure, if I can remember correctly, he just goes six, five into Satori, and then um, plays out Duvall. Hoping, and but which wouldn't that that line didn't make sense to me when he when he does it because I I just showed him Amaru. So if he swings with Dofi and only has one blocker up, I just win the game. So I think he just has to try to go for it at this point. And that might have just been the better line to take because of the position this game has been put in. So that might have been a minor misplay on my opponent's part. But I think all, all around, this game has been very good, very interesting, and pretty calculated from both ends. So he does go 6 in the lead here, and we show him a, the 2k. And now he thinks about going 7 into life. Yeah, he just throws me through a loop there. So we let the Satori go, and then he plays out a Deval. So I'm like, okay, well that pretty much says game over for him because he's only got like two or three cards in hand. I believe it's two, maybe three. No, he's got two cards in hand. So I could easily just play Amaru, pump up Shura, swing for six, because he's got two in hand. So that guarantees you know, a 2k out of hand. So he takes it, and then we just send 7, and we end up getting there with the 7, which was pretty cool. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hit that join button, hit the sub button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'll see you guys next time. Oh, and be sure to join our Discord.